First, I want to give a shout out to. Oh, oh wait, wait, no, no. First, we're going to do some black and white. I see on the Fourth Dimension channel, I was like, hey, that hides some shit I might not want people to see. Um, not you guys, other people. And uh, so I'm going to do it in black and white today. I also like to give a big shout out to Phil. Phil, as you can hear and see, there's your truck, man. I still got it. I'm going to get it back to you. Um, Phil's not, don't need his truck, thankfully, yet. But it has some problems. We're going to try to take care of the problems because he's going to be selling this truck here shortly. Um, it's actually for sale now, I think. But I wanted him to get the most for the most money he can out of the truck. There's a oil pump issue on it. I think it's called the high lift pump, high pressure pump. That's what it is. Um, so I got to rebuild that. And there's something wrong with the front end. I have my suspicions about what it is, but the four wheel drive won't work in it. It's going in four wheel drive. It's locking the four wheel low, but it's not pulling. Uh, this doesn't have a posi type front end on it. it you know it's whatever whatever wheel has the least amount of traction pulls um so i have a suspicion that the hub that was either either the hub that was just rebuilt wasn't put back together correctly or the other hub is also bad either way it's going to send the power to the wheel with the least amount of traction and therefore the four-wheel drive doesn't work so we're going to fix that so he gets the most amount of money out of the truck i'd like to have the truck honestly um i can't afford it he ain't, he ain't want that much for it things only want like seven grand for the truck how it sits it needs work though but it'd be it's got 300,000 miles on it he has another one that has a half a million miles on it anyway what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about freedom do you know what freedom is a lot of self-proclaimed patriots think they know what freedom is and they actually have no clue this stems from a conversation from somebody i know that i was in a conversation with yesterday my wife and i was in a conversation with them this person is a high school um like computer lab teacher they teach computer stuff and we got in a conversation about freedom how free are you so he said something about authorities and i said okay who has authority over you asking the direct question i said over you who has authority so well the police judges etc i said oh so you're not free and it hit him right then i seen it in his eyes he's like well no, well, to a certain degree, we're free. I said, oh, to a certain degree, you're free. So then you're not free at all because you're either free or you're not. There's none of this certain degree, so much of a percentage bullshit. You're either free or you're not free. In this country today, we are not free. As much as I lie to myself and say that I am and all the shit and hoops that I jump through to try to avoid paying taxes and, the and you know, just like the house. I could have bought the damn house. I, I don't buy the house because I'm not paying the state taxes. I give my mom the money and my mom pays the state taxes. Either way, I'm still paying them. But in my head, I'm not paying them for land that I own, right? I'm not paying the king's ransom. But a lot of patriots have the same mentality. And this falls back on supporting the police forces. And I know I harp on it. The police forces are at the core. There's not one issue you have with government. Not one. I challenge anybody to tell me one issue you have with government that I cannot whittle it away down to the police forces being at the core of it. There's not one. No matter what it is, whether it's taxes, welfare, registration, um, registration fees, taxation on your home, taxation on your cars, it doesn't matter what it is. At the end of that paper trail is a dude with a badge who's going to come enforce whatever they say on you at the end of a barrel if you don't do what they say. That's not called freedom, people. But we've accepted these things for so long that they're now normal, constitutional, even free. Part of freedom is the government having complete authority over you. And don't tell me they don't. Don't say, well... The police only bother you if you commit crimes. Tell that to the Marine in San Diego that was shot and killed because they raided their own fucking house over some drugs or some stupid shit. That happened years ago. But there's all kinds of those cases where something's happened to somebody because the police were doing something, looking for somebody else. When it's the community's job, if the community had a problem with that dude selling drugs, trust me, when people sell drugs in the community, you know that it happens. I'm off. Like, I live on this street. I know what cars are normally on this street. I know when there's a car parked out here at midnight that I don't recognize, guess what I do? And you can ask anybody that lives on the street. You can ask my wife. I will get my happy ass up out of bed. I'll put my clothes on. I'll walk out and say, hey, can I help you with anything? Are you broke down? Do you have a flat tire I didn't notice? Is there something that you was wanting to speak with me about since you're parked in front of my house? And they will usually say, nope. 
Okay, just checking, man. Just checking to make sure you're all right. And I'll roll back inside, and you'll immediately see him pull away because they know somebody's watching. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to police ourselves, our own communities. And now you see what happened if you look back in time, just recent times. If you look back at the beginning of the pandemic, the right, the quote-unquote right, um, who was major Thin Blue Line supporter, stopped supporting the Thin Blue Line so much because the Thin Blue Line was hemming up moms that were playing with their kids in playgrounds and shit, arresting them. So the rights backed off and was like, oh, you bastards, we're not supporting you no more. Then it immediately comes in the left. You know, I knew a chess move was coming. They, the, the, the right moved back, so the le here comes the left with their chess moves, with the BLM and let's defund the police. So what does the right immediately do because of their cognitive distance? They move back in supporting the thin blue line. Until we defeat ideology, the ideology that the police are good, or that they support you, or they're your friends, or your buddies, or they only fuck with you if you committed a crime against somebody, until we get rid of that stupid ideology that's 100% factually false, it could be proven that it is false, we as a society will never win freedom back. Now, on a personal level, like me, you, us, community, small, Sure, we can be free. Let's move out in some holler somewhere where there's one way in, one way out. And we live as free as we can for as long as we can until they come. And they're eventually going to come, I assure you. There's nowhere you can run. Bugging out is just a dream. It's a dream that may work for a little bit. But eventually they're going to come. And if you are on your own, guess what? You are dead. If you fight, you're dead. Or you hand over everything that you've prepared for to them. And like they say in the reset plan, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Personally, I'm not happy with owning nothing. Fuck, I'm not happy owning shit. It's not enough. And it's not enough in the sense that I, in my mind, haven't done enough in my life. You get one shot at life. I was talking with Christy about this last night. You get one shot at life. Unfortunately, I spent the first three decades of my life dicking off. Not understand what freedom was. I didn't even know what fucking self-responsibility was. I figured it out. I figured it out late. So now there's things that I probably will never have that I would love to have. Night vision. I would love to have night vision. Like, like if I could have one thing that was a, a um, not a necessity, you know, like other than, I'm not talking about like land. I'm not talking about learning how to farm. I'm not talking about growing my own food. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about if I could just have some bullshit that I didn't need to have. Really, you need to have it though. Um, it would be night vision. I don't need another dirt bike or four wheeler or another car. Well, I do need a car, but I, I want night vision. I don't know why, but because I didn't plan accordingly throughout life, chances are I'll never have night vision unless I'm happy to be walking along and look down. There's a nice set of night, you know, night vision goggles laying on the ground or something. Like I don't even know enough about them to even talk about them for real because I can't afford them. So I don't even look at them because I don't want to get myself down. I try to keep my spirits up. I've been putting down the device lately and not paying as much attention to it. And hopefully you all have been too. So, what do I anticipate happening because of Biden's third year anniversary of the Parkland shooting? Who could have seen this shit coming that Biden was going to make a comment about this mess? Um, sorry, excuse me. I'm having sinus issues. Nose is running. Need a shop towel that probably has grease on it uh, to fix my sinus issues. I know this ain't the YouTuber creator thing to do, but guess what? Ah, how you like them apples? Um... Here's what I suspect. So Biden come out with this big masterful plan and, you know, pushing Congress to create some kind of assault weapons ban. Well, if you go back to the Miller versus United States case or United States versus Miller case, I forget how it's worded, and I read it off yesterday in the live stream, the Supreme Court found that the only weapons that were protected by the Second Amendment were weapons that could be used in the role of the militia or the, and or the military. I forget exactly how it's worded. Something to that effect. I'm not quoting it. I understand. Go ahead, troll. I get it. Um, and now they're saying, let's ban military weapons. So then what weapons exactly are protected by the Second Amendment? You want to know what weapons are protected by the Second Amendment? Whatever weapons you're willing to fucking die to protect. That's which ones are protected by the Second Amendment. The government doesn't have the say so. The Supreme Court, not the President, not Congress, none of them bitches. You had the last say. You always have the last choice. You know why? Because you 
or have free will. They can scare you into not exercising your rights. They can't take your rights. They can scare you into being a slave. But you always have free will. And you always have the last say, no matter what. You can have whatever weapons you want as long as you're willing to die to keep them. And trust me, you will die. If you have that illegal SBR and they find out about it, you will die for your right. You will die fighting to keep it. Or you'll hand it over and you'll go die in jail. Spending 10 years and you're not spending 10 years because you had the weapon. You're spending 10 years in prison because you didn't pay the $200 tax. And a lot of people don't understand how that works. The ATF is a revenue, a revenue generation enforcement agency. SBRs, full autos, they're not banned. You can have them. You just have to pay the tax. So if you get caught for, with one without paying the tax on it, you're going to jail for not paying the tax. You're not going to jail for having the firearm. Does that make sense? Because if you paid the tax, you could have had the firearm. And people say, well, not if it's a post-84 post or post-86. 84, 86, I forget now. Hughes Amendment, you can't have it. Well, yes, you can if you're an SOT. If you pay the tax, you can build all the full autos you want. But you got to pay the tax. The government has to say so. We've been tricked into believing that the government has the last say in everything throughout our lives. Like it's been bred into us. It's called generational acceptance. What my grandfather accepted, my dad accepted, what my dad accepted, I accepted. Well, you know what? That line stopped with me. It's just like drug addiction. It stops with you. Make it stop. But if you believe that anybody in this world, the police, the judge, the government, the governor, the president, Congress, the feds, the ATF, anybody has authority over you, then you are admitting that you are not free. It could be changed. Will this country ever be a free country again? Highly doubtful. Because the sheeple, the sheeple, which is the vast majority of people, there's 330 million people in this country, 328 million of them are sheeple, believe it or not. You now have them talking about this third party that might be created, the Patriot Party, they call it. Yet, everybody that would include themselves in the Patriot Party would be an enemy of mine because I am pro-freedom. So what happens is when we create this new party, or we hit that reset button today, or write our new constitution today, or draft our new declaration of independence today, what happens is the zero starts from now. So the right to keep and bear arms is no longer a right, it's a privilege. Why? Because most patriots self-proclaimed patriots, that is, we call them plastic patriots around here, believe that the mentally ill shouldn't, shouldn't or don't have the right to keep and bear arms. Well, they're too crazy. We can't allow them to have firearms. They're crazy. So what they've done, they made a right of privilege. That is the problem we're, we're at. Even if there was a reset, what does it reset to? My view on it is if we hit a reset button right now, if it was this little bottom of the screen here, or if it was my chin, by the time I let go, we're 98% to where we are because of the cognitive dissonance. Because people just believe what they're told instead of taking the time to educate themselves about the facts. And all the facts are out there. You can read all the letters and journal entries and the founders where they talk about every bit of this shit. Everything. But we'll tuck that away over here somewhere where you can't find it but let's ask google if the president has the power to create executive orders the devices are what's killing us we no longer look for hard facts that are verifiable in books or letters or general journal entries we rely on the people that are against us to tell us the truth it's a big clusterfuck and we're in it what's up baby I'm in the middle of a video, but it's okay. They love you. What's up? I know you're sorry now. I apologize, woman. I'm just kidding. I don't say I don't talk to her like that for real. Only on camera. But hey, on a side note, we have got her talking. We're going to get her on camera and get her talking on camera. We've had her on camera where she didn't talk. We've had her talking on camera, not not being on camera. We're going to get her on camera talking next. Where was I at? 
totally forget now. But it doesn't matter because I think the video was over anyway. Guys, live free. Arm yourself. You know who criminals are. And like, but you always have the last say. You're as free. You're, you can be as free as you want to be as long as you are willing to die for it. And I assure you, there will come. there's a point on that freedom scale that you will have to die to be that free. So then the question becomes, what is a better option, death or freedom? Hmm. You let me know.